name is Tara Feladrotoye, and I'm the founder and the CEO of House of Tara. You're watching Pulse TV. Maybe I would have studied law. I wouldn't have studied law, but I've, got, I've started off by studying business management. Um, I think I would have done an MBA. Um, I, I think also that I would have thought about my business expansion earlier in terms of becoming a brand that is that can be reached not just in Nigeria, not just a local Nigerian brand, but also a brand that, that can be reached in the US and the UK. I would have been more focused around my expansion, international expansion. What else would I have done differently? Hmm. I think that's, that's some of the things I think I would have done that comes to mind right this moment, yeah. Law has a way of opening your mind um, to, ex ex um, to, to the business. It has a way of opening your mind to possibilities. I think that foundation was great for me, um, but I would still say that I believe that it would have been better if I had left secondary school knowing that I wanted to become an entrepreneur and began to prepare myself from that time. It's become accepted that it's okay. Um, and the reason why it's become accepted that it's okay is because um, policies are not being enforced. Nigeria has a lot of laws, but those laws are not being implemented. So if I create a fake of a product, I remember going to see another woman who had had the same, not one, like two of them, who in maybe earlier years, they had this same problem of products that they imported into the country and, being, and the products being counterfeited. And I asked them, how are you able to address it? And one of them said to me, my dear, I have grandchildren and I cannot come and go and kill myself, basically. And it was more of, there was fear. And so if 10 years ago, when this was happening to her business, she didn't respond, she didn't fight, she didn't take anyone to court, somebody else will do it. And then there's somebody else also who was also in this space. And when I asked her, she said she, when she got to a nature market, they said to her that Madame Blood will shed. And so when, what happens is that when people who have been impacted don't react and don't respond, every time they don't respond, what they're saying is giving approval. Uh, and there's a saying that goes, um, uh, things are not going to change until when good men say it's not okay, right? And they no longer keep silent. And sometimes good men keep silent. And in keeping silent, what we're saying is that it is okay. Um, that's one. Two, economic issues. Um, we, we're still a third world country. We're still a developing country. And a lot of times there's not enough resources for people to buy what they want. So when we're talking about um, a growth in the economy and saying there's going to be a rise in the middle class, uh, when you begin to have a recession and where people are beginning to look for ways to cut corners, there will be more advent of people saying, I will go and create a fake of it because I cannot, I, I cannot afford the original. And because I'll buy a fake, somebody else is saying, I will supply you the fake. Mm -hmm. The only reason why there's a supply is because there's a demand mm -hmm. demand for it. Uh, but the, the truth of the matter is that voices haven't also been raised to say it isn't okay. And there, and there are consequences not just to the company or the businesses or the br personal brands that have been impacted, but there is a, there is a, um, there's a disadvantage also for us as a people, as a country. I, I always say that the U.S. is selling a brand. They sell their brands. Mm -hmm. Uh, Apple is going to be manufacturing in China, but then says designed in California because the thing of pride that this product is designed in the U.S. Um, people are conversing for made in the USA. Donald Trump is talking about let's make America great again and let's bring jobs back home because for them, this is our country. This is the country that we need to de develop. And he was voted in because of that message. Um, we aren't protecting our own brands. We are not protecting our own brands. If somebody went into a, a location where they say, I was in, at the airport in, in France and there was a part of the par airport that had by Paris. This is just exclusive for products out of Paris. We are, as a country, and not yet protecting our brands. And as long as we don't protect our brands, not just from a government standpoint, but even from a consumer, everyday people, if we don't protect, if we don't stand to protect our brands, then we begin to see these difficulties. So this is one of the reasons why. And of course, uh, when, you, when you see a situation where a product is expensive or considered to be expensive to some people's levels, then they, it, it drives home a desire to 
to buy the counterfeit, but also sometimes it's also about supply. People cannot find the product readily, and they're not willing to go out of their way to find it. And because they're not willing to go out of their way, that's one of the reasons why there'll be counterfeit in our products. One of the things about pornography, for example, is the reason why um, some of the issues that drives pornography or some of the content of pornography is young girls who have become sex slaves. Mm -hmm. And so you are sitting down somewhere, you know a girl, one day she disappears, right? Mm -hmm. And she's been flown or, or, or you know, put on a boat and taken to another country. That girl was somebody that was your age mate or someone that was your friend, someone that could have been your friend later in the future, but she's totally disappeared from the surface of the earth. The reason why there will be slave trade that will continue, sex slave trade that will continue, is because they need the content, they need that girl to become a content for, a porno for pornography, right? For a pornography shot or what have you. What happens is that every time you go on a porn site, what you're doing is you're placing a demand on the sex slaves. And so as long as we continue as a people to seek to buy the fake of a product, mm -hmm. There will always be a demand. And, and so even if we want to talk to government and say, government, we need you to support and, and put resources with the parasitals to ensure that um, brands are being protected, that's one way. But if the people themselves, if your friend is buying fake Tara products and you see her and you say nothing, or you see your friend buying a pirated movie and you say nothing, then you are, you are beating and contributing to it. Favorite product in our line, in, in entire line, is our dual foundation, and um, it's one of the uh, best products. It has a lot vera in it. It has it's chemical free, paraffin free. Uh, so people who have acne generally, when they use it, it drives away acne. It doesn't aggravate acne, and so because of that reason, we decided that we wanted to do more with that product. Uh, you know how it's a product is a bestseller, and you begin to make variations of it. So we decided that we wanted to make a variation for of it where we're going to put it in a gold packaging. It's important that you marry someone who's a part of what you're doing. So, so for example, if you're dating a guy and you're going for a job into interview, even the choice of what job interviews to go for or a choice of where to put your CV, you and your boyfriend need to have those conversations. The minute you do it only by yourself, and it's the vice versa, it's also for the man as well, it's called buying in, to buy in. Uh, when you run a business or you are uh, head of a department, you find that for things to move, people within your team have to have a buy in. And that expression is used in corporate to say buy in means as the leader of that group or as a party in that group or the person who's the champion of a particular concept needs to ensure that they are telling people and explaining to them to the extent that they understand what it is and then join in, in the concept. So it's the same thing, you're dating someone or you're in, mar in a marriage. You want to go for a job interview. You are looking for a new job. Is your partner part of that process? When a person feels a part of the process, they also feel a part of the success. They also feel a part of, uh, they have a sense of ownership. Mm -hmm. So in my own relationship, I, I think that even the name of my business, my husband and I thought it through. Uh, when the business started to expand, he, he, he would go somewhere and say, oh, I saw so-and-so place, or I was, I was looking for financing, he would say, why don't you call this person? Because he felt like a part of the business. He feels like he owns the business just like I did. Now, I started the business before I met him. So if you look at our relationship today, you would almost see, think that Fela maybe even founded the company with me. People sometimes ask me that question. But I think that becomes important. If you're not, if you, if you, the guy you're dating is not the kind of person you can carry along on that journey, then why waste your time dating him in the first place? And then if you're married, why are you creating this, a relationship where there will be division because you're not sharing mm -hmm. uh, and you're not sharing. And as long as you're not sharing, the other pers 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 person is not a part of it. That's one. From a woman's standpoint, I would say men are not really looking for a woman that loves them. They're just looking for a woman who would respect them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're different and we're wired very, very differently. Our brains are wired very, very differently. I remember when my kids were much smaller and my husband goes to do school runs. Whenever he goes to do school runs, he's almost so um, inundated, like he's confused. He, you can't, he can't have a conversation with you today speaking of the children. When he gets into the car, he can't talk until he has gotten home and the kids have gotten home. And I'm like, this is what I do wearing high heels. 
not only would I go to each class to pick each child because there were three children, I would engage mom. So I see Susan and we plan play dates on that same afternoon that you can't even make a phone call. Just, but that's because we're just so wired differently. Women can multitask and can do all these different things at the same time because of how they're wired. And so we're so different. And even what our desires are in relationships are different. And so I think generally that a woman wants to be loved. They want to know that they're cherished. They want to know that you, you care about them. That's how we're wired. But a man just wants to be respected. That's why whenever they talk about the word ego, they use it to describe a man, you know, generally. And so um, and respect is, is, is not generally a worshipping a person. Respect doesn't mean worship. You can respect even someone that's younger than you. But if women learn how to respect and give the men the things that they want, they would also reciprocate by giving the women what they want. And if a woman gives, if a man gives a woman what she wants, which is loving her, then also most times it will translate into respecting them as well. So I've said two things. One of them is that um, it's important to carry your, your partner along with you on, on your journey. And that's how, and when they're part of your journey, it means that they can help you through it. So if he's a man, he will help you with the kids. If he's a man, he'll help you with, you know, he'll help you with the things. And if it's a woman, the same thing, because it's almost like two of you are partners. And when you're partners, one person is like, okay, you're not available, let me do it. And the other partner is saying, you're not available, let me do it. That's what partnership is about. The second thing is, I believe that men want respect. A uh, woman wants to be loved. And, and I think that if a man wants a woman to respect them, then they should extend love. And if a man wants, uh, if a woman wants a man to love them, then they should respect them. Inspiration is tied to your purpose. If you're sitting in your purpose and you're working in your purpose, inspiration comes. Inspiration is not something that's exclusive to some people. Inspiration is, is not exclusive to some specific people. But as long as it's almost like um, you, if you are in the rain, you will, if you stand in the rain, you get wet. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, if, you are in a, if you are in a forest um, uh, or in, you are in a um, ranch, you're going to see animals. So this, this is, for me, if you are in your purpose, and I think everyone needs to find what is that natural habitat, what is that thing they're naturally good at. And when they stay in that place of purpose, then inspiration comes. When, you start to, when inspiration starts to be far away from you, it's a sign that you're not where you ought to be. Uh, and I think that I've been very, very lucky. I'm just, I'm only just, I'm turning 40 in, in, in a week's time. And I've looked at, I look back and I'm very grateful because I found my purpose early. And because I found my purpose early, I, I, I was able to also consistently find and get inspiration to do different things in different seasons. So I would say inspiration comes from being in the place of your purpose. <music> garden. Um, I spend time with my friends. I'm, I'm, a, I'm very big on relationships. So I have friends all over the place. I have friends in Argentina, friends in... So I can pick up my bag and travel. Um, I'm going to spend time with a friend in Johannesburg for a week. Uh, I'm very, very big on those, on my relationships and developing them. Um, I'm also big on um, spending time with my, with my husband. Um, so if I can spend, find him to steal some of his time, I will do that. Those are the things I do to relax. Um, I like food in a funny way. Uh, not food to eat to the excessive, but eat to just be, when you hear me eating, you almost want to eat because it's almost like, is it beans that you're eating like that? You're eating beans like as though it's something, some delicacy from somewhere else, you know? And so, yes, I don't eat a lot, but I eat in a way that you would enjoy just even just watching. It's almost like it's entertaining. First of all, is a mindset. You go into marriage thinking that that feeling you had when you met him will forever stay that way. But they don't realize that there are times where it doesn't, it's not there, but you reignite it, and there are things to do to reignite it. Sometimes when it happens, you rather than reignite, you say, Oh, I've fallen out of love, and then you kill it. I tell people that my husband walks into a room after 16 years of marriage, and when I see him, I actually have a warmth in my heart. But it has not always been like that. There are times where, especially when I was having my children, 
where I just wanted to be by myself. Maybe I was even going through some kind of depression. Maybe I didn't even know. I had my children back to back. It was like I said, my life was just around the babies, right? And these are things that happen to you that can snatch you away from a beautiful relationship. But if you are smart enough to say, I recognize that these things would happen, but I almost, I must all, always be conscious to take my life back. So the expression would be to take my life back. So if today after 16 years, my husband and I behave as if we just met and somebody meets us and say, are you people, are you married? And he's like, I, I remember when we were on vacation, somebody said, ah, are you guys married? And I was like, we've been married for 15 years. And he was like, oh my goodness, you, the, your, your chemistry is like you just met. That did not just happen. It is ensuring that our sex life does not die because sometimes when women get married, they start having children, they start losing interest in the sex. And nobody is thinking of what can I do to help my libido. They're not thinking about that. No one is actively asking other women questions. I did it. I asked. I remember calling one of, one, even one very, very famous publisher in Nigeria to say, Auntie, this is what I'm going through. What should I do? And, and I'm going through this experience. And people need to ask questions. Ask other people and say, if you've been married for 20 years, how are you keeping your sex life alive? People will tell you things. But these are not information that is just everywhere. If you don't ask, you will not know. And a lot of times people are not asking. Other times is that sometimes you start to focus on the person's weaknesses. And the truth of the matter is that we are built, God built us with strengths. And sometimes our strengths are overdone. They become weaknesses. So you can meet somebody who is passionate, but they are aggressive because they are overpassionate. But it's passion. It's just that when it's overdone, it becomes a weakness. But a lot of times we now focus on the person's weaknesses. And when you focus on a person's weakness, the more weakness of the person's weakness you see, the more you dislike them. So in our relationship, what do we do to ensure that we remember the things that our spouse or our partners are great at? When I was going to give my husband Valentine presents this year, I just sat down and wrote 76 things I loved about him. Some of those things I didn't even know until I started to think about and I started to write them down.